one. Okay, we're back. Right, strength guys. sessions. Strength sessions. Also, I got I got a couple questions about the strength and conditioning. You guys have uh, you had Jamie Lopez over at, at Jesuit, yeah. and he has a, a great pro. You guys had a great program over there. Yeah. But how how is it the importance of um, working out continuously? Because what happens is sometimes I'll get guys, and I'll talk to other coaches, and we'll get players who will maybe work out for a month or two months, and then you get the guys who are consistent, which yeah, consistent, which means they're going to make gains. Um, year in and year out. Yeah, so but going to big leagues, really quick, a, a tip. A, yeah, a tip for like the younger kids. It's like how important is it to stay with a strength and conditioning program year in and year out? Oh, it's it's big time because uh, my I have a cousin that was older than me and went to Jesuit, and he uh, he got drafted in the play. He's been mm-hmm. playing. Who's that? J.R. Higley. Okay. And so. When I, like, freshman or sophomore year, I was like, hey, can I get whatever workout you did? Because he was a little skinny guy like I was. Yeah. And put on, like, some, some weight in high school. Uh-huh. And so I just started working, even just at 24, working out yeah. daily. And we were doing this stuff over at Jesuit. Uh-huh. And it was a little harder during the year, uh-huh. but I still always how old, out. How old were you when you started working out? Probably, I was... Probably a sophomore when I started. Okay, and then out. from that day on, you continuously, or you're consistently yeah. lifting weights or doing something to always help get stronger yeah. and faster. Yeah, always. Mm-hmm. Since since then, I've never really stopped working out mm-hmm. at Did all. You only play baseball. Yeah, I played football my freshman year, and after that, just baseball. Yeah. Now, were you doing the same thing as Hunter? Hunter where basically you're just in the gym, body weight, or were you actually doing uh, um, squats and bench and it wasn't, et cetera? Yeah, I was, in, I was doing like some weight stuff, like not all body weights type of mm-hmm. stuff okay. like that. I was actually doing some weights and stuff like that okay. in high school. I mean, if you look at how important strength and conditioning is, I mean, you have two examples that are perfect. We have another guy on our team who's uh, out of high school is uh, 18th rounder. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the real deal, you get dropped out of high out of high school, you're getting a lot of looks from people. And he's had a career and he's, and he's been really good, mm-hmm. but it's been for short periods of time. You know, he threw 60 innings, but someone with that kind of talent, yeah. a, a good amount of innings for a starter would be around 100. Yeah. Every single year, he's been hurt. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not because of the first part of the season, it's because you're trained so that you're healthy for the whole season. Yeah. Yeah. Because, and that's the importance of it. And so you take two examples. You have Justin, yeah. not a whole lot of not a whole lot of love out of high school, right? Yeah. You know, didn't get get all that much attention, didn't get definitely wasn't gonna get drafted, right? Yeah. Now he's a thirteenth rounder as a junior in three years. Same guy eighteenth rounder out of high school. He's a red shirt, red shirt junior now, because mm-hmm. he uh, had an injury that also had to sit out the entire season for. Mm-hmm. And he's going into his senior year, and he's he's hoping to get drafted at whatever point he can. So that's I mean that's two perfect examples. You have a guy who's done everything right and trained the right way, and then you have somebody who's kind of left that part out. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a talent thing; it's who's going to put the work in. Yeah. Was Justin the pitcher as well? No, Justin's a hitter. Oh, just, oh, one's a pitcher, one's a hitter. Okay, exactly. Well, especially with the pitcher, I can mm-hmm. definitely see. If you don't you know. if you don't maintain the same shape, you're whipping your arm around, and you, it's just the force is really hard. Well, if you might have a better chance if you're just a. Uh, a, well, a general player, but and like I said, you're, about that a lot. You're, you're you're trying to pitch 100 innings in a season. That's what I like when I train a baseball guy. I go, you got to like even for a regular player, you're gonna play spring training. You play over 200 games a year, and that's a lot of freaking games. That's yeah. That's a lot of that. That's a lot of wear and tear on your body. A lot of guys will get stronger into the like coming into the season, and they, and they just hope to maintain maintenance. maintain yeah. throughout the year, and then pretty much by the end of the year they're up. just crapping out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like. How about talks about that? Uh, a we whole had a year. Conversation about that. He was saying how this year he's kind of changing it up a little bit, focusing more on baseball appropriate, pitching appropriate stuff. You know, no bench press, things like that. But he's going to work really hard, like he did last year, to get to get big and get strong, so he can maintain that through the season yeah. and not be weakened by the end of the season. But he now he understands. You know, because he played in the developmental league as well. He understands now how important it is to do more specific work around specific things during the season, all season long. Yeah. Especially no, mobility. Uh, yeah. I mean, you think, you know, especially if you're, you know, swinging the bat a whole bunch or throwing the ball a whole bunch, mobility becomes huge. Well, yeah. especially baseball. Okay, I got this yeah. one thing right here. Okay. And also for, for the younger kids out there, um, as you go 
and develop a strength and conditioning program three days a week, two days a week, get, get in the weight room. Okay, and then you have school, and then you have other pro other stuff. But all, obviously, if you want to be the best you can be, your sport has to be number one, and then everything else everything else will follow to get you in line to, to play that sport, yeah. whether it's grades or, or whatever you need to get done. But how important is to establish a strength and conditioning program early so that when you do have homework or when you, you have other demands, that you can still fit in your strength and conditioning program. Yes. Because I know when I went to Sac City, it was pretty much easy. The school was pretty much easy. And then when I went to play for Division One school, there was so much work. I go, dude, how did, I mean, how's, yeah. it, how's it get done? Because bottom line, I was just playing baseball, going to school, and doing everything I can to just do the homework. <laughs> And still, um, I ended up, we had, our, half our team was on uh, academic probation, yeah. so we all had to go to summer school at the end of the season. But just the fact that, like, kids in high school, which is, I mean, I mean I'm sure you get a lot of homework, but how, how important is it to, like, start to integrate, like, okay, I know I'm going to have homework, I know i got to do my strength and conditioning program. I think you need to almost do it really young which is actually one of the things with gymnasts, when they start training really young, at a young age, mm -hmm. they have to learn how to time manage at a yeah. much younger age than most of these other ball sports who are, oh, they hit high school and they're like, oh crap, way more schoolwork than like junior high. Yeah. Now I gotta like start figuring things out. The kids who are doing gymnastics, have, they're already training 10, 20 hours a week when they're like eight, yeah. 12 years old. So they have to learn how to time manage. I mean, they have to even learn how to time manage like dinner and stuff, <laughs> you know. It, it, so how did you guys, so you okay. almost have to Manage hit it time. early on. Time management. And making well, I mean, sure you got your workout in and your homework done. It's almost uh, like a personal decision. Like, what's more important to you? Is it more important to go get in the gym and work hard? Mm -hmm. Or is it more important to go sit at home and play video games or go hang out with your friends mm -hmm. every day? It's like, it's just who you are, you yeah. know? You see a lot of guys who just ride through high school and even college just on talent alone. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to work once you keep getting higher and higher. Because it's, all the players are about yeah, the same. Yeah, the players are getting better and better. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. So it's a personal So their talent actually just get, gets them to that level. It doesn't make them stand out at that level. Yeah. A lot of players don't realize once they get to a certain level. You have to work harder. Yeah, you got to yeah. work harder. Even like, I would say even like an average major league, it's like, okay, you get, you get into the big leagues now. Which is, you know, everyone's freaking really great. Yeah. So now, what are you gonna do to step up your game? And you're gonna figure out, like, okay, I gotta work on this, this, and this. Yeah. And what, what, like, what in terms of, like, you're hitting, you're getting, you know, get into like preseason mode, and what things from last year, like, hey, I need to do this, just from playing a little bit of rookie ball, like, say, okay, I gotta, I gotta work on this and this, or, you know, what kind of things are you gonna work on coming into uh, spring training? Well, I just, because I went, or I played rookie ball, mm -hmm. and then I had a couple weeks off, and then I went back for instructional mm -hmm. league, and so they worked, like, a bunch of stuff with us, um, and a lot of hitting stuff, of course, mm -hmm. and it's just, um, I have that power and stuff, I just need to find a way to, like, be more consistent, because yeah. I strike out a lot, Okay. and it's just, like, I just need to find something to help me be more consistent, mm -hmm. and it's a lot... It's a lot almost mental, like, I learned a ton of stuff, just like, because we had meetings every morning, yeah. and it's so mental that it's crazy how much just talking about it helps out, and, like, I don't take, you go into the cage and hit, and you're just working on stuff, there's no need to, like, get pissed off or stuff, anything yeah. like that, because you're just trying to work and develop. The, that's what, because I would always just hit in the cage just to hit almost. Yeah. And just to take swings. Yeah. Just to, okay, I got my swing hitting yeah. done. So, so I would just hit for an hour and just to take swings. Yeah. And now it's more like, all right, I know what I need to a do. More a more yeah. focused approach, because there, yeah. like you can take 10 minutes of swings and take quality hacks, and then yeah. that's all, that's all, that's yeah, all that's you need. Yeah, that's what, that, kind of going back to your question. Because that's almost like lifting weights. You take too many, you take too many reps at Whatever kind of exercise, yeah, yeah, yeah. your body's gonna get tired. You're gonna break down, and then you're well, not really getting anything out of it. Develop a strength training system for yourself early on. I mean, and I know it can be tough because people think of strength training, they think of lifting weights, and a lot of parents are 
aren't afraid of letting their, you know, little eight-year-old or ten-year-old or whatever pump weights. But if, I mean, if your kid wants to make it to the big leagues, whatever sport it is, they need to be. You have to be committed. Whether oh, yeah. it's whether it's shooting, yeah. whether it's shooting a thousand shots a week or what, whatever it is, like it has to be there. So when you get to these higher levels, you're, the focus can be in other places. The focus can be on getting good grades. Can be on all this other stuff. And you're just kind of riding more on that muscle memory of I know what it feels like to be in the gym. I know what it feels like to work hard. You know, like you said, it's like you would just hit the hit, and that worked for you because it's like just ingrained. But now you have that, so you can actually take that kind of knowledge of it so you and have, you focus even more because yeah. so, you know how to hit because you've yeah. done it for so long. So working with the, the coaches, they point out certain things that we're going to now start to implement and put into put into use. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing was. In college, I was like, I stood pretty narrow, you know, uh-huh. and they're really big at like getting into your legs. Wait, what is he and Wait, so he said no narrow no, stance. So no, you were narrow. You saw I was na- like I wasn't like super narrow. So then you just take a long stride at the bar. Or? So they wanted to watch it for four years. And I told them, you need to widen that stance up. Like this guy right here. You got the same ding dong coach is telling the same thing. I was like, man, you just gotta widen that stance up. But it takes like no, a no. certain person to say that, and then once that certain person is, it's on. Then it's yeah. like, okay, then I can develop. Well, it's, it's not even to be a pro coach. Huh? It's, it's, <laughs> there you go. It's, uh, it's not even just widening your stance out. It's just like using my legs more and stuff okay. like that. So. Uh, why the stance out? <laughs> so kids, use your legs, not your hands, yeah. hips. You can hands. use those too if you want to. You can use those yeah. too, yeah. So how much, so, so um, but also like adjustments, sometimes adjustments can take a long time. And yeah, like, like talk, talking to a young hitter and saying, hey, you know what, you might not get results for like six months or maybe even a year, but yeah. if you stay with the process yeah. to change your, your muscle memory, yeah, your swing, Staying with it long enough to where that change is going to happen, and then when it happens, it's like okay. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Like how? I mean, yeah. It's it's going like, to suck at first. It's gonna, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, gonna, it's you're, different. You're, and your hitting is going to probably go down a little bit. bit. Yeah. But knowing that, okay, I'm going to get to this point. Tiger Woods is a great example of that. When he changed his his swing stop, and like, oh, his career is not. Yeah. And then a year and a half later, it's like oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there's. There, Everything needs to be thought of as a means to an end. It's you know, almost you have, a, you have a result that you're looking for, yeah. and you, you have a plan to get there, and it doesn't mean that you do what you're doing to get there, and you get there right away. It's like, no, it's a plan, and you have to like, be patient enough to actually let it work. You know? yeah. I think that's the hardest part with young athletes is being patient, and even having the support of a family that allows them to be patient. Because sometimes it's, you know, these sports are expensive, you know, especially from a like, travel ball teams and stuff yeah. like that. So it could be like, no, my kid needs to be good now. It's yeah. like, well, I don't know. But they also, it goes back to, yeah, but it's also, it's okay. You want to see your 12-year-old dominate and be like a superstar and then not even play when he's 18? Yeah, that's exactly. the question. Don't, it's like, well, you got to get your kid and let him develop. And yeah. Don't pick him out early. Work ethic. Like Hunter had said, that, that picture, right? It's like, just athletic ability just allowed him to dominate. He gets into a higher level ball and all of a sudden it's like, it happens. Yeah. You know, it's like it's, domination is not what it's about. Video the video. best football player to ever play played D two. Jerry Rice. I mean, well, maybe not the best football player, best receiver to ever play. He played D two, yeah. and yeah, he stood out D two, but he wasn't good enough for one. Yeah. Right. Yes. Nobody's ever. His been work ethic was just it's it's phenomenal. Back to the work ethic thing. I mean, you're gonna. I deal saw with his 30-30 on ESPN. Yeah, yeah that guy yeah. was just amazing. Yeah. I mean, not the most crazy athlete. He but people wouldn't realize that unless you saw his workout. You know, they yeah, just saw him play and they're like, oh, they just. I mean, the guy was. I, 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 got, I got a yeah. chance when they were training at a, a, a Rockland at a, What's that junior college right there? Uh, William Justin, right? No, 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 no. it's uh, called Sierra College. Rockland Sierra College. Sierra. Yeah. Sierra yeah. College. I got to see him a few preseason. First person on the field, last person off the field. He was making millions of dollars. I mean, he had a huge contract and he mm-hmm. was. But nobody was working harder than he was. Mm-hmm. Nobody. I mean, and, and that's why he's the greatest, you know. But yeah, I think especially with baseball, it seems to be that way. Baseball seems to be that sport that it's probably the hardest it's sport a high to skill make sport, it. Man. And yeah. to make it to the big leagues, it's definitely the hardest sport to make. It to the big so what? So your adjustments? You're using your legs more. How do you feel with those adjustments? And oh, it's. It's kind of hard to like get used to stuff like that because you've been doing something for so long. Yeah. You know? 
and I started seeing like results towards the end of the end of the year, um, even in instructional league. So it's it's been feeling good, and just keep working working at it. That's the most important. Thing, you know? So Hunter, how was it for you? Uh, sorry, did I? Oh, no, I'm good. So how was it for you starting and like starting to pitch your senior year? It seems pretty late to start pitching. And then to all of a sudden be at the super high level. Well, for baseball, you can sign as a position, like you can play shortstop, and then they'll sign you as a pitcher. Yeah. So they, they look uh, at the, like the three up the middle. Yeah. Pretty what is much. that transition like? I mean, it was, in terms of learning a new skill really quickly. I mean, I can't say I technically just. I mean, I've been literally I was yeah, pitched, pitched, right? and I, I pitched a lot then, yeah. um, and because I was really good at a young age, like so yeah. a really good arm, right? Uh -huh. But a really good arm gets you nothing if you don't build a base around. So what did I do? I blew my arm out when I was a little kid. So I didn't throw, I couldn't real. I, without arm pain, I couldn't throw until my senior year. So that's but what you find out with young pitchers, the coaches want to just like, okay, right. I'm going to win this yeah. game. No, and, and that's, and I mean, I do lessons with kids yeah. on the side. That's what I do for, uh, to make my money and to pay for yeah. stuff. But as far as that goes, I mean, I see all these kids and stuff. Who cares if you have a good arm? I mean, I got some, some kids that can fling them, right? But I'm not interested in their arm right now. I'm interested in building a base. I want to see them do the right thing so that arm yeah, stays healthy when they're 18. And everybody's like, oh, I want my kid to pitch. No, no, no. Don't have your kid pitch until he's you know in eighth grade because yeah. here's the thing. You can train and develop that. But if you're blowing that arm out at such a young age and putting that kind of stress, you're losing what your kid could be really good in the future. Yeah. So, do you so want you're to also developing their work ethic. Right. And you're showing them, like, if you work hard on a consistent basis, you and you're going to get better continuously. Well, I mean, I, I have kids that know we're near as talented as some of the guys I work with, right? Mm -hmm. But they do the things right and they listen mm -hmm. in a proper form, just like a proper lift. Yeah. And everything, it's just doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. They're they're more advanced now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's because they've bought into the system. Yeah, they've bought into they that. Work. Right? They've got themselves a chance. Yeah. Well, as a coach, those are, the, those are the players you want as a coach. Yeah. I mean, what coach wants some... I mean, <laughs> it, it's really hard as a coach to have just, if, every, if it's just talent, then there's nothing to really coach. Like you have to have, at least in my experience with coaching, I would rather have a kid that works hard, that has a good awareness of the body, that has good skill, but more importantly, smart. It has good, it has good knowledge about whatever sport it is. Um, and has that ability, has that pliability that listens well. Instead of that person is just like, I can throw hard, whatever, you know. Well, he just says the big, <laughs> That listens. What well, it's not the guy you know that is the most talented that's going to make it to the big. This guy has a work ethic that can work hard. That's going to consistently do it. And is it listen. And I know because I don't listen. I'm stubborn as anybody. You know, so it's easy to see why these kids won't listen. And I get it now. But when they listen, the, the special thing that you can get is when you get someone who's extremely talented and they listen. You get that, and it's just like it makes you look like you're a genius as a coach. You know, but that's hard to find. And everybody underestimates hustle on and off the field. And that's, that's what's my thing. If, they, if you don't hustle with my lessons, all right, exactly. on to someone else. Because yeah. that's what I teach yeah. is hard work and hustle. And if you do that, it's going to give you a shot. Because those are, like, like you can always control your, your intensity, how hard you run, how hard you work. Those are things you can control. That's hard easy. work, your work ethic, running a hard on and off the field. I mean, just, like, players should focus, I mean, well, you can focus on stuff that, if you can control. focus on stuff that you can control, there's so much. Yeah, well, that's in yeah. life in general. That's I mean, true. Talk about like manifesting. Man, they're going deep, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, if you try to control, <laughs> manifest strength, right? Manifest strength. You try Heck to control yeah. those things outside of your realm of control. You waste your yeah. time. You're wasting your time, especially as an athlete. There's so many athletes out there. It's 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 just you're wasting your time. I mean, you might as well just throw them. You might as well quit. You know, you can't control the people you play with. You can't control your coach. You can't control how much playing time you get to an extent. You can't control all that. Yeah, but you just gotta yeah. control how you play, how you play, how you respond. Cause like, well, like Tom I had Ray's a friend. Uh, so go ahead. I had a coach, probably a freaking awesome hitter, uh, Wayne Weinheimer. Played at Sac High. We played a little bit of minor league baseball, and. Um, what happened was, he was an awesome, awesome coach, right here, just, the ball would just fly off his bat, like, like a bullet. He freaking, he got, he got in a little scuffle with his coach, but, man, after that season, he was blacklisted. Mm -hmm. Kind of not surprised. Well, yeah, so, he, so he basically, you know, he should have been in the big leagues, but because 
you let outside stuff affect him uh, instead of saying, hey, you know what, I'm not going to be playing for him, in, you know, I'll be gone and make sure I play somewhere else. You just, you know, you let something outside affect him and he took the wrong steps towards, you know, but he realized that and was able to share with a lot of the players uh, that he coached, including myself, that, hey, you're going to probably play for that one coach that one year and then, and move on. Don't and be with yeah. Charles Rebo. Yeah. Don't show the coach. It's not a good idea. Yeah. Not a good idea. And I think I think football is a good example of that with like backup, especially running backs and quarterbacks. And you know, football is one of those sports where you know you have, you can have one opportunity. And that's the only opportunity you have. And it's like that with a lot of sports, but I think football is a good example because a lot of people watch football. But if you're trying to control how many reps you get in practice, or you know how many reps, how many how much playing time you get, or you're trying to and control or wasting your time thinking about all those different things instead of just what can I do to get better? How can I uh, take advantage of that opportunity that I get whenever I get it? Uh, then you end up missing that opportunity. Uh, and it sounds like from your experience with changing your stance, all that kind of stuff, it sounds like you have, you're able to listen, which is going to be good. Yeah. So it's like when you get that opportunity, you're going to be more, you're going to have. You're gonna have a better chance to actually make it, take advantage of the opportunity and be in a better place to benefit from that because you're listening, you're doing the things that the coach were asking, you're being uh, receptive, and you're not, you know, pushing back. And it's, it's interesting a lot of high, high caliber players how their ego can just get in the way. I played with a guy at AR, um, one of the most talented guys I played with, uh, in football player, and his ego though. And what was really interesting is his dad really fed into that ego. Like, oh no, don't tell my son what to do. He knows what to do. You know? mm-hmm. And he was this—I mean, he was this crazy athlete, but he just would not listen. Would not listen at all. What ended up happening? Got kicked off the team. Never played another down of football since. And he was, I mean, the guy was immensely talented. Mm-hmm. So all, all those youngsters put that e- get that ego out of the way because uh, it serves no good at all. You know, it serves no good at all. Definitely. Yeah, well, you can always learn more. Yep. It's just you don't know everything, and maybe someone knows something that you don't. Yeah. So, and they they actually get to see you do it, and so they have a better perspective of what's going on when you do. Yeah. So you just gotta listen. And even if you don't like what they're saying, they still like they still might come up with something that might help you out. But if you don't like what they're saying, you might want to listen a bit more. Yeah. There's, probably yeah. re- there's probably a reason you don't like what they're saying. It's because it's true. <laughs> Which manifests getting deep. <laughs> you guys, age, you guys any other money. tips for just developing your skills, work ethic? Um, Especially what? for youth. Like, what would you, what would you do it as youth? I know as a youth, my dad's like, you're small, you should be lifting, Blair. <laughs> That's seriously, he was. Because he was small. And that's what he did. He just lifted. And actually, he lifted in high school, which is back in the 60s, as I was saying. That's pretty cool. It was uh, a lot different then than now. Because obviously, even now, they're still struggling with don't lift, um, body weight. It's still That's still very much a tradi- tradition in baseball. You know, all sports. It's not football. Like, football. Yeah, it's football. Like sophomore year, yeah, like sophomore year, you really not lifting that much weight unless you just have that one coach that's like pushing you guys lift uh, the our football yeah. program well, Jimmy taught, freshman taught freshman year you're yeah, doing yeah, things we, yeah, stuff squats. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. you're doing it until our sophomore year yeah, we didn't really start lifting hard until sophomore year either I mean there's programs yeah, out there right right yeah. Yeah. yeah like that that transitional summer but I mean junior high if you ask me like 13 12 13 if you really want to be if you really want to give yourself an opportunity to make it to that next level, like you said, it's a choice. Put down the damn video control player, you know, like, get out of bar. Get off, get off of them, get off the couch, and like, go to work. You just gotta do the work. But also, or what, it doesn't. comes down to like, whether it's hitting off the tee or lifting weights, it's like, what I'm doing right now is you're getting better, bottom line, and enjoying that process of hitting off the tee and taking ground balls, taking fly balls, the whole point of it is... Well, you have you to enjoy, enjoy what yeah, you're you doing. Yeah, you have to enjoy, like, taking like, We talked about control. this with, uh, like, gymnastics. And there are some coaches who are like, oh, the conditioning isn't fun. And, you know, we want to change it up to, you know, so they'll be more into it. Like, um, they have to learn how to just enjoy that stuff. And then, if they do, they'll make it. If they don't, 
<laughs> but wash out. You just out. enjoy it. Like, you don't learn to do anything. You just enjoy it or you enjoy don't. It. Yeah, as a kid, I enjoyed doing push ups when I was little. Exactly. Just, no, listen. Yeah. You know, I enjoyed that stuff. Like, that's push ups. Why that's why you're a coach. That's why you're a strength coach. But uh, basically. I have, I have a question for you guys. Uh, what, in terms of balancing school and, and that, especially at college, what were some of the things that you did that you felt that you kind of came to realize were really important skills or habits that you developed at a young age to help you uh, keep, keep that balance? Because if you don't have great genes, like, that's just kind of the way it is. And you, know, you call a student athlete for a reason because school should always come first. Uh, but what, what were some of the things that helped you guys get good grades so that you could not only get the opportunity to play in college, but also actually be able to play in college? Uh, it's no difference. Same, like you're talking about the same thing pretty much, student athlete, right? Yeah. So if you if you have that kind of work ethic as a athlete, then have it as a student. And that means really don't good. wait until the last minute. And if you do, grind it out. You know, yeah. you're yeah. gonna have to grind it sometimes. And there's gonna be times being an athlete that you're not gonna have that time. So you're gonna what you're gonna do? You're gonna stay up until two in the morning and get exactly. done. Yeah. But that's the reason why you're in college. You're getting paid to yeah. go to school. Yeah. So treat it like. And I mean, I guess in high school, I never took it that way. You know, I kind of took it for granted. I was like, all right, I still get three O's, and that's fun. But yeah. in college, I go, oh wow, it's a little different. They're paying for me to go to school. But also, don't you get you get more work? Get uh -huh. more work. I mean, I got more work and stuff too, but it seemed like less because I took pride in my work and said, whoa, this is getting paid for, and I need to make this count. You know, and and it's just it's just like baseball. As you go through, they're looking for reasons to discount you when you get a job someday. They want to see who had who worked harder, who had the better GPA, and the little things. I mean, it's so competitive nowadays. And, uh, Work hard. And if you work hard, baseball, whatever sport it is, or school, you're gonna get the you're gonna get the dividends from it. So you just gotta keep doing it. That's the only thing. Grind it out. Yeah. Because yeah. there's gonna be times on the road even when you're gonna have to do schoolwork in an airport or in a hotel room while everybody else or while your roommates are sitting there just watching TV, playing video games. Yeah, playing <laughs> video games. You're gonna have to just grind out a paper or yeah. stuff and. I would say, like even during the season, the most important thing is just talking with your teachers because they're. I maybe had. Wait, one. so communicate? Did you text them? No, no. You actually yeah. wait. We had the what? Yeah, you have to, actually have to talk. You have to talk to them yeah. like face to face. Yeah. No Facebook messaging. Work teachers. on your work on your for people skills for sure. I maybe I maybe had one teacher in my whole my three years at Sex State like not be that cool about like helping me out. Every other teacher was willing to like help me out and like do stuff for me since I was in the young and missed a lot of classes. The teacher, they understand, they know what they love to do. It helps out a lot if you talk to them. Did you plan on going back and getting my degree? Yeah, I actually, uh, I took this semester. Hey, he's from Jesuit. You probably already started online and did it. Yeah. <laughs> you have five hours to walk your class. He was yeah. already graduated college before you even started college. <laughs> no, that's a that's a fun, that's a good example because when I came back from summer, I I had four classes and I was going to be gone for a month during the school year. And I just talked to my teachers and they were all like, "Yeah," because I didn't miss any tests or anything. They were like. As long as you just like keep up, the test will be hard when you get back because you weren't in class. But I, I knocked out four classes this nice. semester. This, this like this, just this past yeah, semester. Yeah, just this past semester nice. I knocked out four classes. That's what you go into uh, instructional, yeah. instructional league. So I mean, a lot of people, well when you come back, I mean, that's why you missed it for a month. But like, you have that opportunity to go back to school, you know, that dedication. But a lot of people don't. You know, they're like, oh wow, I got six Oh wait, because you got, book, you got, uh, School in your contract? Yeah. Where they pay yeah. for you, pay for your school after you. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. So, but yeah, I just was like, yeah, I need to, I'm not doing anything else. All I have is a little, and I took some time off after intro from baseball, so all I was doing was lifting. So, lifting, getting ready. Well, I might as well go to school. Like, there's. Finish, finish that degree. Yeah. yeah. I only have two more semesters after this, so. Sweet. Congratulations. I think that's yeah. really smart. I think a lot of people have this perception. If you have it, there's a 30-30, uh, um, ESPN 30-30 on uh, pro athletes and money and what happens. And, you, know, you need to have your degree. And if you go to school, you should finish it. Uh, not only personally, but to make sure that, that you always have something to go back to um, if something happens or when all the money goes away, which is a possibility for a lot of players. But that's cool. What are you studying? 
Critical justice. Nice. Uh, are you the same? Uh, I'm a comms major. Communications. Okay, yeah. Comms. Yeah, that's, that's it. Good stuff. I'm all out of questions. <laughs>